We are here with Ryan Padone and Field the Sting, a 2013 son of Dash to Fame out of the incredible Mare Stingray. Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me. What can you tell me about this incredible pink buckle stallion? You know, um, Stinger, uh, we've had a little bit of hard luck each, like his maturity year and his derby year. Uh, beginning of his maturity year at the juvenile, he started out but he's really promising. First run in Arizona looked really promising. That was his first maturity. Then he uh, takes something and bruised his hawk, oh, no. so fairly bad. So he was off all the way to Fort Smith. Mm -hmm. He made the Fort Smith maturity finals. Uh, he went through and um, finished his maturity year really strong. Started out his uh, three years super strong. During that, um, <laughs> during his uh, derby year, they were even collecting him. Like he was going back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, at the the end of that derby year, uh, he won Tulsa, and then he had an injury. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a layoff of him, and we got him back up uh, last spring. And he was really, really sharp, placed up the elite derby, he was getting ready to go to Diamond Bird Derby and Fort Smith Derby, that was his last derby, uh, his six-year-old year. They had to pull him uh, after he did their the derby, derby just because he was so wanted for breeding. So he, it's very hard on him to do both, not mentally, just physically. Mm -hmm. So they pulled him and he went to the breeding farm. Okay. Uh, last summer we tried to get him back after the breeding season was over. and. He just wasn't himself, mm -hmm. so we had to get him uh, back healthy and strong. Mm -hmm. And he came into the BFA Derby, and he ended up in the top five there. Uh, then we went to the Oklahoma City Derby. He played some sweepstakes and um, also ended up uh, in the, the top ten there at the Oklahoma City Derby. And that's when Jason Martin, um, high point performance horses, performed him. And that's when they let me know, like, this year they're not going to be staying in them, so he's going to have a shot to get to rodeo. And uh, so I was really excited about that because their other horse, Dashi Jones, got us into the buildings. Mm -hmm. And so I was really, really hoping to have him for the buildings. So um, now that's what he's doing this year. That's so exciting. And you guys have had an incredible winter. You've won money at Denver, Fort Worth, San Angelo, and now absolutely dominating at San Antonio. So what can you tell me about how you like to keep your horses fit and healthy and happy when you are rodeoing with the schedule that you are? Okay. Uh, I'm a big, I long trot my horses a ton, so I'm a big long trotter, and when um, we, we go home, they're always like turned out. I don't really keep them stalled up much. I feed only 500 and platinum performance, just the regular platinum performance. Uh, these horses have like a really good farrier. My farrier, Sid Myers, he does a great job keeping them balanced. And um, they get regular like vet checkups and everything. Yeah. My husband, Don Lee, at Double X, he does all their vet work and keeps them really tuned up that way. Uh, I believe a lot of hay. I keep really, really good, expensive hay. They have free choice uh, Bermuda. <laughs> and uh, he gets alfalfa morning and night, but um, pay in front of him all the time and just a really good fitness program. I do a lot, a lot of long stuff. With him, because he has been in your program for quite a while, he's the horse that you maturity, you derby, and now you're transitioning to the rodeos. When did you know that he had that it factor that we're all getting to see and enjoy now? You know, uh, Ron Rawls and Patty Rawls are, um, he started them. Okay. So I uh, couldn't ask for somebody better to start them. And when uh, I went to meet him, when they were like, Jason and Charlie were looking for a trainer for him, they interviewed like several trainers. And, you know, Jason was really quick to let him know, like, don't get so excited. You might not get him, you know, just oh, yeah. go meet Ron. And so yeah. I uh, went and met Ron and I could just, I mean, you could just feel his presence mm -hmm. when he was, came out arrogant and just like knew it's like somebody he's like i know who my mom is you know oh. he's just, so he just has that he just has that uh way about him and you can just feel that energy with him and then uh ron had such a great foundation on him so when i got him back from ron's and started him on the patterns of just natural you know um there's some horses that I really take pride in, like, I train that horse, and then there's horses like him that, you know, make you, you know, you're just appreciative of, because uh, they just Very do so much for you. Yeah. yeah. What are, what's your advice for somebody who 
has Futuri, Yudo has Derby, and now they're wanting to switch to the rodeos. What's your advice for that transition and, and how to make that as smooth as possible? Uh, you know what? I season these horses and I um, take my time and I let them come into themselves. Mm -hmm. So as their Futuri year uh, progresses, I, I tried not to push them past the limit where it hurts their confidence. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like, I'm kind of known as kind of a slower trainer mm -hmm. on some. Like, if a horse comes into their self at a young age, you know, I'll win at the beginning of the year. Sometimes I have to, like, let those colts, like, progress and get confidence, and then they kind of mature. I don't force the maturity. Mm -hmm. And as I go along doing that, I never try to set them up for failure or pressure them. I always try to make it, like, a, a, a win for them. Whether it's like, you know, I have some colts that just, they might not be a winner at the beginning of the year, but if they're making those consistent patterns and just getting a little bit more confidence. So I do that all the way through the maturity and derby year, and I never try to set them up for failure and put so much pressure on them. Mm -hmm. So it's all like about having fun. Yeah. So like when they go and make that run, they're like, oh yeah, we're going to run barrels. It's not like, oh gosh, we're going to run barrels. You know, it's like they crave it. And uh, it's just a lot of patience. And um, I don't, I don't rush them. So, and I keep it fun for them, and I keep it fun for myself. Yeah. And a lot of the, the owners that are right for understand that. So I'm real fortunate with that. You guys have placed at almost every major indoor rodeo that you have entered this year. What are you? What's your mental self-talk as you're coming down the alleyway, or what's kind of your pre-game routine? You know, I, uh, I used to have really bad nerves. Mm -hmm. um, when I started the turkey, I had a really good mare, and uh, really she should have won more. Mm -hmm. She taught me a lot, so I had to work on my mental game. And so, you know, I'm kind of a history junkie, so I did a lot of research about like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, and like that was some real pressure, yeah. you know? Like when you were a spy for George Washington, that was some super big pressure, okay? <laughs> like so, like, when I go up the alley, all I gotta do is go make one turn at a time yeah. and have fun. Yeah. And if you are prepared and your horse feels good and you just take that one turn out of time mm -hmm. and keep your brain clear, like when it's your turn, it's your turn, you know? So I just try to work hard, be prepared, and then hopefully like when opportunity meets that, mm -hmm. you know, then you get to keep your turn. Yeah. So that's that's what I do and I and I keep it a lot of fun and um, that's the biggest part because like you get to thinking about it. Just run barrels. Just run barrels. That's the trick. Just run barrels. <laughs> well, my final question for you is, you know, he has obviously a very famous sire, a very famous dam. You mentioned that his personality is a lot like Stingray, and he has quite a presence about him. What would you say, knowing him as well as you do, what is his greatest attribute? Uh, you know, um, he has, like, a big heart. Mm -hmm. And he is one of the only horses that I know that runs barrels for himself. Like my other horses, they run barrels to like please me and they wait on me and listen to me. Mm -hmm. When he walks up that alley, you know, he's just like, he's there for as much fun as I'm there. Yeah. And um, so I would say, I mean, there's just something in him that not every horse has. And I talked to Sherry about it and he's got a younger sister that's a paternity horse this year. Mm -hmm. And she seems to have it too. Mm -hmm. So it's something, it's something that Stingray, I think, puts in him and just like, that love of the actual sport mm -hmm. and a huge heart so um he doesn't ever really get nervous he's like you know like bring it yeah so well that's wonderful thank you so much yeah. these guys are about to run tonight and so thank you for taking the time yeah thank you in the midst of a busy schedule we really yeah, appreciate appreciate it. It. yeah thank you